Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. I bet some of you already know the story. Let's see, we're going to be reading a bunny story, so can everyone practice by moving their nose around? Let's see, it's kind of tricky. Can you move your nose like a bunny? <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to begin. Here we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Here she is. There's her little tiny umbrella. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Does anyone at home like blackberries? I love blackberries. But Peter, uh-oh, but Peter, who was a very naughty, ran straight to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Oh, no. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. All, and then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Oh, his stomach. But round the end of the cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Uh-oh. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages, but he ran, uh, jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Stop! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Uh-oh. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other among the potatoes. Do you see the teeny tiny shoe? Smaller than a bird, right there. He lost his shoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Do you see that button right there? Caught in the net? Oh no. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed a big tear. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Come on, Peter, come on, you can do it. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop over the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Phew! And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Splash! Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. Hmm. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Can't you? Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. 
Run, Peter, run! And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to work. Oh, oh, Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking around. Lippity, 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 lippity. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head. And then Peter began to cry. <laughs> Poor Peter. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but it became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of the hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter shuddered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeked over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him he saw... The gate! There it is! Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind the black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Oh, Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got back home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Hmm, I wonder what else Peter had gotten up to that lost him his coat and his shoes. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave him a dose of it to Peter. One spoonful to be taken at bedtime, she said. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Great listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that story, and maybe you already know the story of Peter Rabbit and some of the other tales from Beatrix Potter. I highly recommend checking her out and looking at her Oh, so cute illustrations that go along with her books. I hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoy the sunshine. See you all soon. Bye-bye.